What's cracking, big? Oh, damn. I look kind of good in HD. Usually this shit makes me look terrible. We're doing a super flex rookie mock draft. Free agents have landed, which is completely irrelevant to this. I don't even know why I brought that up. We're going to do a 12 team half PBR super flex rookie mock draft. You know, it's so funny like that. That terminology right there, super flex rookie mock draft has half PPR, just like throwing out random things has become so mainstream for like fantasy football and people in dynasty. But when you say it out loud, if you were to say that type of settings to a friend that walked in that had never played in a dynasty league, you sound like a fucking psycho. I'm about to do a rookie mock draft, super flex dynasty fucking half PPR league right now. And they're just like, bruh, you need to go see mental help immediately. But that's cool. You know what else is cool? Someone got me this e-bike yesterday. This thing fucking flies around the streets. It goes like 20 miles an hour. I almost hit like three bitches as soon as I got on this thing. Anyways, here's actually what we're going to do. I'm going to take you through the journey of creating this mock draft. So if you guys ever want to do it with your friends or you got a group of people, you want to tweet it out and see if people want to join your shits. We're going to do the mock draft on Sleeper. So you'll see on the left here, mock drafts and new mock draft right here. Boom. I already have it set up because the last like 17 drafts we've done have been this setting already. So what you want to do is change the settings here to Dynasty 12 teamer. We'll put two minutes per round because I know y'all be slacking when I'm on film. Not everybody's got as big of a brain as me. We'll go linear. You know, you can make it snake if you want. If you're just kind of practicing, like when we are gathering the ADP data for everybody, whether it's snake or linear, doesn't matter because the same players are being picked at the same spots. But if you want to do it realistic, linear means, you know, when you have the 101, you also have the 201, you also have the 301. So if you're new to Dynasty and you've never done a rookie draft before, that's how they work. It's like the NFL draft where if you have the first overall pick, you're also going to have the first pick in the second round. Roster settings. This is what you got to do. If you want to make it like a realistic rookie draft, you want to do it four rounds. You want to set it to quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. You don't want to make them all flexes. Otherwise, it gets weird on sleeper and every player in the pool is kind of linked together. So that's really it. And then you can copy the invite link from here from the settings tab. And I'm going to throw it into our discord and I'll throw it onto Twitter. And if you want to join our discord, you could do so by signing up at patreon.com forward slash BDGE morning peasants. Today's YouTube film is me making fun of you while you draft in this super flex rookie mock first come first swerve at everyone drop the link. Go on to Twitter. I'll do it from the BDGE account. Make sure you're following BDGE. BDGE underscore underscore. Tweet. I'm going to retweet Animal's House, little shits. And we're back to sleeper. Now we just wait for this to fill up. Man, I got my first round of vaccine shots. Oh, I got to make sure I'm in this bitch. Let's go to 10. Actually, no, let's go to 7. If I tweet these out or if you're in the Discord, make sure you hop in them quick because they feel quick. We got the whole fucking army barking. Barking. We'll go with the, the 107 spot. I got my first round of vaccine shots yesterday. And like, it's fine. It's whatever. My arm's a little bit sore today. I ain't going to fucking be dramatic about it. But afterwards, they're like, yeah, you come back in three weeks for your second round of shots. And I'm thinking whip out the TI-83 calculator, you know, crunch some numbers. If so facto, three weeks from yesterday would put me at the day before the NFL draft. And I'm like, the NFL draft's a big weekend. We're trying to stream for like 38 straight hours, man. And everybody who gets the second vaccine shot usually gets very sick about you know, 24 hours or 18 hours after their first shot. And I'm like, bro, we can't be doing this. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna get the vaccine because I'm trying to stream for y'all. Really case in point. That's really what, what I'm getting at right now. The love I have for you guys transcends a pandemic. All right. What do we got? Trevor Lawrence at the 101, Justin Fields at the 102, Jamar Chase, the 103, Najee Harris, 104. I have run a lot of mocks since the pro days have settled down. And there's a few things that I have noticed. I mean, Trevor Lawrence continues to go 101. Justin Fields is an interesting case here because we've seen a bunch of reports. We've seen a bunch of rumors that he will likely not be one of the top three quarterbacks picked. Uh, I'm sitting here at the 107. All the top quarterbacks are off the board. The number one wide receiver is off the board. Najee Harris is off the board. I'm debating between Travis Etienne and Rashad Bateman. But because Rashad Bateman came in at like six foot, 190 pounds, I'm a little bit more skeptical 
on Rashad the God uh, in terms of his overall ceiling. I still think he'll be a high-end wide receiver too, you know, um, but the, the alpha status is a little bit in question. I still love him as a player though. We're going to go with Travis Etienne. Came in at 215 pounds, ran that 4-5 flat 40-yard dash. So he's got all the makings to be uh, DeAndre Swift or, or, or a Dalvin Cook type player, Alvin Kamara type player. The upside is very, very real. You know, him coming in at 215 tells me that he could be a three down workhorse for sure, for sure, for sure. I think we kind of know the draft order at this point in the NFL draft. We have Trevor Lawrence going off at one, Zach Wilson very likely going to the Jets at two, and then probably Mac Jones at three for San Francisco. That begs the question, you know, how far does Justin Fields fall? Does someone trade up to the number four pick to the Falcons? To, to grab him there. I, I I would assume the Falcons trade bike and they fucking better. I'm going to lose my shit live on air. If the vaccine don't kill me, the fucking Falcons might. So Justin Fields becomes, you know, an interesting player in the fact that the draft capital is not there. But realistically, you know, any quarterback picked in the top 10 is going to have the same leash for the most part in the NFL. So it's not really a big drop off. If somehow Justin Fields drops to like fucking pick 24, which will never happen, you know, then we've got some concern. So Justin Fields still at the 102, completely fine with that because his rushing upside is rushing floor. As I said in a video last week going over the pro days, if you missed that, I uh, talked about all the, the biggest winners and losers from the pro days. Justin Fields is a guy that could be like Jalen Hurts with more pocket presence, uh, just a better arm overall. I really like Justin, uh, Justin Fields, right? 15 rushing touchdowns over the last two years, uh, a lot of rushing yards. So that's just what he brings to the table here. Then you have Jamar Chase, who absolutely blew out of pro day. And I think a lot more people are becoming more and more comfortable with Jamar Chase at the top of this class, whereas a lot of the mocks prior to the pro days, we saw Jamar Chase landing more so in the 105 to 107 range. But now I think people are liking, you know, Najee Harris didn't test. Travis Etienne came in a little bit slower than most people expected. Javante Williams, same thing. All of the wide receivers, the first tier wide receivers that were near Jamar Chase either didn't test or or were disappointing in terms of measurables or athletics. So you're looking at Jamar Chase really hopping up the board and becoming the most comfortable pick realistically at the skill player position. So I've seen Jamar Chase continuously go in that like 103, 104 range, which I think is is probably the right move. He's a, he's a fantastic prospect. He didn't come in in that alpha size, right? He came in more so in the two uh, 200 pound range. So I'm a little bit more a little bit more skeptical. But like you know, you're you're over 200 pounds. That's fine. Then we have Najee Harris, Trey Lance, Zach Wilson. I'm high, man, if, if, if I'm in that 106 range, if I'm in a rookie draft and I could trade up to grab a quarterback, like if I need a quarterback and one of these guys at the top four falls to 106, 107, I'm trying to make that move to trade up. If you have like the 110 or something and you can move up to the 16 and, and give a, a mid second round pick or a late second round pick to make that move, do that, do that, do that. I think Zach Wilson, the fact that everybody hates Zach Wilson lets me know that he probably is going to be really good. ETN, Javante Williams was very slow at his pro day, unfortunately. He might be more David Montgomery than, you know, Chris Carson or whatever people want to peg him as. Kyle Pitts is an interesting case as well. He went off at the 109. I've done about eight to 10 rookie mock drafts over the last couple of weeks with the people in the Discord or over the last couple of days with the people in the Discord. Kyle Pitts has gone, I've seen him go as early as the 103. He's continuously in, in the 105 to 107 range. So people are very high on Pitts right now, as they should after the pro day. I'm just not someone who's going to... Uh, go all in on a, you know, very much like I don't want the fucking Falcons to use the fourth overall pick on Kyle Pitts because I just don't believe in tight ends doing being that big of a fucking part of the offense. I don't want to do that in fantasy. Okay, so we are on the clock. Where are we at, though? As I've been saying for about a month, while other people have been fucking trying to serenade you with these bullshit middling second round running backs, I've been saying you steer clear. You look for these second tier wide receivers. Oh, why does Tylen Wallace keep falling, bro? Tylen Wallace has the dog in him, okay? Tylen Wallace coming out of Oklahoma State is a baller. I love Tylen Wallace. If I can get him at the 207, I would I would shit. I, would, I need to wear diapers, man. I, I might need to wear diapers for my rookie drafts if this shit keep going to keep happening. So Kyle Pitts, listen, if it's a tight end premium league, I'm cool with that. Uh, I think Mike, you know, Mike Me Up made a very good point on Twitter the other day. Let me. If you ever want to see if someone said something specific, this is how you do it on Twitter. You type in the word that you're looking for and then from semicolon the person no oh, i used two p's by accident nope now i did one p what's wrong with me you go to latest people see the word tight end premium and they go all out when in reality that scoring format will only favor target hogs and should devalue every other tight end will pitts be a target hog maybe but personally would not pass on t law to find out so it's it, it, the conversation was more so like do i take kyle pitts at the 101 or 102 i think that is absolutely not in tight end premium regardless of the fucking setting but the overall point being with tight end premium, it's very much like I get asked this question a lot. You know, does uh, do quarterbacks become more valuable if it's like a six point passing touchdown league as opposed to a four point passing touchdown league? 
And my answer to that is no, they don't become more valuable. The rankings change within the tiers themselves, right? Like a, uh, obviously a quarterback who's going to throw more touchdowns is going to be more valuable than a rushing quarterback in the six point for passing touchdown league. And that's the same case with tight end premium. Okay. Like it doesn't make them more valuable as compared to other positions. It separates the guys who have a lot of receptions, right? On like a raw points basis, we don't, you don't, you know, draft running backs over wide receivers because they score more points on a raw basis. Like, yes, overall, they probably do. The reason you want elite running backs is because the point differential between an elite running back in fantasy and like a middle tier running back, right? The RB1 or RB2 overall compared to the running back 11 or 13 is a, it's a league winning gap where for wide receivers, that's almost not ever the case on a, on a year by year basis. And that is the case for tight end premium. It's like tight end premium doesn't make the position overall more valuable. It makes the guys like Travis Kelsey who get eight, 10 catches a game way more valuable than the tight end five, than the tight end seven. It separates them, right? Because a lot of the guys in like the tight end four to seven range are only there at the end of the year because they caught five, six touchdowns in a tight end premium league. The, the gap between the guys who actually catch a lot of balls and those middle tier guys who you could say, oh, he finished his tight end four, but he just caught a lot of touchdowns is huge. OK, that's that's the overall point there. And I think it was a good one uh, by Mike to keep that in mind. So with Kyle Pitts, like tight end premium, of course, he's going to move up a little bit because he's a weapon and he should be super involved in the offenses. I don't think we need to go crazy about it. OK, so you had Tylen Wallace, Seth Williams, Elijah Moore. Damn, they keep you know what it is. Elijah Moore keeps falling down because Sleeper has their ADP like kind of shot right now. Trey Sermon, love that. I think he got a little bit of hype from the video I put up a couple days ago, the Pro Day video, Chuba Hubbard, eh, Kadarius Tony, eh, Tamar and Terry. Things are getting interesting in the third round. Man, you want to talk about someone falling off? Jamar Jefferson. Let's look at some Pro Day numbers. First of all, I want to talk about Tylen Wallace, who's just, just just not getting the credit, man. He just, he, just, he, just, he just ain't getting what he deserves. Who's the other one we're talking about, Jamar? Oh, 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 I'm on the clock. I'm on the clock. Uh, Elijah Mitchell got sniped for me at 3-5. You, you guys are smartening up. You guys are smartening up, baby. Wide receiver, tight end. I don't want to draft a tight end, really, because the top three are off the board. That's fine. Um, Kyle Pitts, Brevin Jordan, Pat Fryermuth. Pat Fryermuth did not test the at his pro day because he's going through uh, recovery from a shoulder surgery, so we don't really know his athleticism. Brevin Jordan did. It wasn't great. So I'm looking at wide receivers. I don't love Dwayne Eskridge because he's like 45 fucking years old, and it took him a long time to break out, but the kid's really good, and he's really fucking fast. I'm not mad about taking a shot on him in the third round. The other guys I would be considering, y'all know I like Ramondre Stevenson. He ran pretty fucking slow at his, at his pro day, though. He's like a he's like a high 4'6 guy, which is usually a problem at the NFL level. The other guy I really like down here is Javian Hawkins. So I'm, de I'm deciding between Ramondre Stevenson, Javian Hawkins, and Dwayne Eskridge. This would probably be dependent on what my team makeup is for uh, like for my actual dynasty roster. You know, am I looking for a, a wide receiver or a running back or do I want more depth at the certain position or whatever? And obviously draft capital is going to matter. So these rankings will move up and down a lot. Oh, my boy, Ramondre. Fuck it. Fuck it. Who are we looking at? I don't fucking remember. Oh, Jamar. Yeah. Jamar Jefferson just had an absolutely abysmal, abysmal, abysmal profile because his his calling card was his calling card was workhorse size and and speed and breakaway speed. OK, and he came in with none of that. And this was my problem with him when I was watching him on film. I was like, he's not el elusive whatsoever. So depending on what he runs at his 40, like that's going to be the difference maker for me and whether or not I actually like him as a rookie prospect and whether or not I'm going to use draft capital on him. Because as an NFL running back, you need to make guys miss, right? You need to make guys miss at the next level. Otherwise, you're just a fucking jag and eventually you'll get replaced. You can make guys miss in one of three ways. Power, elusiveness, speed. And Jamar Jefferson is not elusive, right? I, I've... I've referenced this stat many times per sportsinfosolutions.com. They are a deeply analytical website. His broken tackle rate of 9.8% ranked 110th out of 114 running backs in the NCAA. He just doesn't have wiggle, but he has great speed and he can do one cut or so we thought. So he doesn't have the power because he weighed in at five, uh, 206 pounds. He supposedly his playing weight was like 217, 218. So we're like, oh, he's got workhorse size. He could be a three down back at the next level. And he drops down to 206. And we're thinking, okay, fuck, 206. Like that's a big drop off from 208, 218 to 206. Maybe he makes up for it with elite breakaway speed. 465. Like, bruh, bruh, Jamar, give us something to work with, sir. Give us fucking something to work with. 
Good Lord. And you see his best comparables, Jamal Williams. They also had his weight still at 217 when they ran the initial. I, I talked to Cody, who runs the team over there at, at uh, the content team over there at Player Profile. I think they ran the best comparable player when they had his data in at 217, but I'm not going to you know pick apart the nuances here. Regardless, Jamal Williams, would he be any good if he wasn't on the Packers, like, and they didn't just give him the role that he had. Like, when he goes, he, he's playing in Detroit. Like, he's going to be fucking terrible. Regardless, Jamar Jefferson, huge loser from the pro day. Tylen Wallace, bro. Oh, they don't have his workout in here yet. Oh, what's going on here, player profiler? Damn. Okay, so Tylen Wallace. Let me see what I could find, Tylen Wallace. When you're looking for fucking pro day times and 40 times, do not look at anything that says unofficial, please. There you go. Official results. Jim Nagy usually has, like, really, really, really good. A good official times. Official results for uh, Tylen Wallace, four four eight four five two. Okay, so that's going to come in. That's not too, that's actually not, it's not blazing speed, but the rest of his athleticism is pretty good. So he's coming in at almost six foot, uh, 194 pounds. He was just a guy who was a mega producer at college, dominator rating in the 93rd percentile, big play guy, 16.3 yards per reception, big college target share, breakout age at 19. Tylen Wallace is a guy that uh, it kind of reminds me of like a Calvin Ridley or a Tyler Lockett. He's just got that dog in him and he makes plays all the time. So uh, Tylen Wallace is like that second tier wide receiver guy that I would I would be taking over Amon Ra. I would be taking over Deami Brown, especially after Deami Brown's fucking Deami Brown is another dude. Everyone just lost at their pro days. Like everyone this year lost. You're supposed to be running good times and you guys stink. You guys all stink. I know Mike, Mike loves Deami Brown, but I'd imagine he's not as high in him after his 40 time came in. See what they got him here at. Damn, they didn't update fucking Diami either. There's a few guys they didn't update. I know Amon Ra came in slow as shit. Four six six. You really do just hate to see that. You just hate to see it. Um, so these middle tier of wide receivers, Tylen Wallace, Elijah Moore should be up above these guys in my opinion. Seth Williams is another guy who I'm glad he's starting to get a little bit of hype. Uh, he's very athletic, very big. He was the alpha there in Auburn, sharing the field with Anthony Schwartz. But most of the time, I see him going in like the 3-2 to 3-5 range, which is an easy smash there. He's in that second tier of wide receivers. Trey Sermon is the one guy I'm getting much, much higher on based on his pro day. And we talked about this in the pro day video. Let's see if they put in a... a I think his comp is going to come in at Josh Jacobs, James Robinson, or Kareem Hunt. Let's see it. Ugh, they don't have it up yet. I just love that burst and agility score for a guy that's 215 pounds. So Sermon's a guy that's slowly rising up my draft board right and i've always said like oh we don't like to go off small sample sizes but listen that's like uh, when, when when i'm talking about like that like it was a concern for me with josh jacobs like he he wasn't a guy i wanted to use the 101 on a couple of years ago because of the small sample size you're able to draft a guy like trey sermon at 210 33 35 right that's usually where he's going we're, we're going to be compiling all the adp data that i've been doing the mock drafts with over the last uh couple of days and we will be putting it into the draft guide, which is live right now, bdge.store. If you all that haven't copped yet, the Rookie Dynasty guide is live. We've got all the rookie profiles. So we really went in. We've got like 40, 45 rookie profiles, and we will continuously add more to the mix. Should be looking clean. Look at Schwartz. Schwartz looking like he knows his teacher just caught him fucking cheating on his GMATs. Why is he sweating so bad? So we've got all the player write-ups for everybody on here. Whole lot of motherfucking information on there. The ADP will be up there. Our rankings are up there right now. Rookie rankings, dynasty rankings, bdge.store. What else do we got here? Yeah, so I like Trey Sermon. Kadarius Tony's fine because if he gets, he, he's probably going to get a lot more draft capital than people realize. So he's fine at the end of the second. Tomorrow Terry, loser from his pro day. Michael Carter, a little bit of a loser. Jamar, loser. Elijah Mitchell, Huge winner. I'm really excited to see his ADP. I know he's going to rise up probably around, if not around and a half. Okay, I'm on the clock for the fourth round. Okay, so my boy Javian Hawkins is still there. Let's go. I've been getting so much fourth round Javian Hawkins. I will have more fourth round Javian Hawkins than I will second round Kenny Gainwell. I can tell you that. I can tell you that because let's look at Javian Hawkins. Javian Hawkins was a guy that I thought was going to be small. He's out of Louisville. I thought he was going to weigh in at like 180 pounds. He comes in at 196, I want to say. No, 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 no. Don't do this to me live on television. This is, this is about to fuck me up if it's true. Oh, oh, oh. I'm a fool. I'm a fraud. I'm a farce. I'm a farcical. I thought he came in at 196. I guess that was his. That was what they listed him at, at playing weight. Okay, so Javian Hawkins a lot smaller than I had anticipated. Um... And I had gotten excited at 196 because he ran the 451. His burst score is good. His agility score is good. And looking at look at him compared to a guy like Kenny Gainwell, where everyone's going nuts because he hit 200 pounds. 
And I'm like, dude, the athleticism is nearly on par. They're they're the same player, the same size. You're looking at the Michael Carters. You're looking at the guys in that mid range, the Chuba Hubbards, who are you know roughly the same size or whatever. And I'm getting excited about Javian Hawkins, saying they're all the exact same in terms of athleticism, right? Like Kenny Gainwell is nothing impressive here. His best comparable is Edo Smith, 200 pounds, runs a 4.52 uh, agility score in the 18th percentile. So I'm looking. And I'm like, Javian Hawkins is basically the same as all of those guys, but you're getting a two round discount on him. Now I need to rethink things. Now I'm sad and I'm broken and I like Khalil Herbert and I would have went with him had I done known that Javian Hawkins is 183 pounds. And that's on me. That's on me. That's why we do the research. That's why we play the game. That's why. I, fuck, I was going to do the Triple H thing. That's why I play the game. But I, that's not the words to it. We're here to play the game. We're ready to play the game. It's time to play the game. I'm on one today. I'm feeling good. Yeah, where the fuck is Jalen Darden or Chris Evans? Yeah, neither of those guys are on Sleeper's ADP for some reason. I'm actually about to tweet them right now. Tell them to lock it the fuck up. We can't be pulling this bullshit on a Thursday morning. Thursday morning is a beautiful spring day. You're going to fucking not have... Ugh, sleeper, I'm going to have a word with you. This draft's about to end. Puka will... Someone draft Khalil Herbert. Someone draft Khalil Herbert. What are you doing? What are we doing? I need to get that that thing that the, the Scott Van Pelt puts out. You know, what are we doing? Tutu Atwell. I just can't get on board with Tutu Atwell, bro. People, yeah, Mel Kiper really mocking him in the first round. He's 155 pounds. Tutu Atwell would have to eat Tutu Atwell in order to become Marquise Brown. That's how fucking small Tutu Atwell is. What were we in the middle of doing? Oh, we are tweeting at Sleeper. Sorry, this video got out of hand, as they all do. Y'all need to add Jalen Darden and Chris... Evans to the rookie class on a damn t on a Thursday morning. I don't know why I'm putting that part in, but you know, I still hate about sleeper. You got to put a fucking period before the thing so people could see the tweet. You know, I want people to see the tweet and then like it so they can also yell at sleeper with me. I don't even know if I spelled Jalen Darn right. I'm going to look like an asshole if I try to yell at them about a player that I don't even know how to spell his name. Oh yeah, I spelled that way off. A-E-O, A-E-O. I was close. Skirt. All right. Well, y'all can thank me later that you can now draft those two players. That is the four round Superflex rookie mock draft. I hope that was helpful. I will put the link to the draft board in the description of the video, as well as maybe pin it in the comment section so that you guys can kind of check it out at any time. But the ADP, the new ADP based on probably 15 to 20 new rookie mock drafts will be available in the draft guide as soon as, you know, the end of this week, probably. Y'all can cop the draft guide at bdge.store. Everything is on there. Merch is on there. Patreon subscriptions are on there. The draft guides are on there. So love y'all for any support. If you do purchase the guide and it's acting a little bit funky, just clear your catch, clear your cookies, clear your fucking brains for a little bit, and then come back, you know, cook yourself some fucking lasagna, get some calories in your system. I know how you get when you're hungry. Barilla. What's the pasta, what's the pasta company? Barilla. Y'all should clip that and use it as an ad. BDGE X Barilla. The collaboration that nobody asked for and nobody needed. I'm out. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed. We're doing Dynasty Rookie shit all, all spring long. Goodbye. Let's go.